Hey guys, welcome back to another episode in my tips and strategies for PUBG. And in this game, or this video, I'm going to show two games. And I'm calling this video The Little Things because it is the little things that sort of will either get you killed or will end up getting you the chicken dinner. But it's the little things that a lot of people either. Um, sort of mistakes that they just it, they're easy things that you can correct that will help you get to the end of the game and at least get you in a position to win the game so um i've tried a couple times to record this and uh, i go too long so here's what i'm going to kind of do i'm going to show you this is where the circle is we're down here and i'm going to go ahead and kind of cover the things that are mistakes little things so i'm going to start rattling them off okay first little thing guys do not be in on vehicles don't be in vehicles at the end of the game unless it's absolutely necessary fuzz over here uh he's on a motorcycle we're gonna see kind of what happens with him this guy will end up coming over here he ends up making a buttload of noise honcho mcducket is down here he's going to hear him he's going to end up running up this hill What's going to happen to Fuzz is he eventually gets off the motorcycle. When he does, there's a guy over here, C Dot. C Dot ends up seeing him and he ends up taking him out. The result from that is Honcho McDuckett comes up and starts to raid and loot Fuzz's, uh, 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 whatever, his loot box. And so he starts looting him. Now, here's the thing. If you ever uh, start raiding somebody, but you're not the one who got that person down, the problem you're going to run into is whoever got that person down is probably on their way. And there's still 25 people left. So there's a good chance that that's, that person is going to come over and try to raid. So once C dot ends up getting down uh, fuzz, there's someone else who will make an appearance. And it is a guy named Dead Rabbit. Now, when Dead Rabbit is coming in late to the circle, he's in a muscle car. He comes barreling up this mountain. When he does this, he ends up wrecking. The problem is C Dot has all the advantage in the world, but the problem he makes is he is using an automatic weapon and he never lets go of the trigger. Because of that, his shots are going more and more errant. What you need to do is to let go of the trigger, let the gun reset, and then start firing again. Um, you know, Wacky Jack, he says, try to get off five to six shots, let the gun reset, and do it again. Now, that's a mistake that I make all the time, but I'm getting better at it. So the result from that is Dead Rabbit ends up getting C Dot down. The result from that is there's a guy over on the other side. Uh, no, it's Andy. He is over where Fuzz basically is, up on the hill, and he ends up sniping and ends up getting Dead Rabbit down. But then he moves over across the street, and once he moves across the street, Honcho McDuckett has run over and he's looting another uh, uh, person that he didn't get down, and Andy's able to get that guy down. After that, all of a sudden, here comes uh, Big Cooter Joe, and he's running up the hill, and he's taking damage from the blue zone. And rather than um, sort of let uh, Andy get out of the way and get to the circle, he starts taking shots. The result from that is he doesn't get him down. Uh, Joe doesn't get him down. And now he's got to run to get to the circle. And he's waiting for him and gets him down. So did you follow all that? Because I'm going to set it to two times so we can go really quick and see this wonderful travesty of little mistakes that everybody's making. So here's Fuzz. <laughs> Rex multiple times, but just doesn't give up his motorcycle. Just refuses to give up the motorcycle. And there he goes up the hill. Andy is still shooting at him. Runs up the hill, here comes C Dot. And the problem with this replay is for some of it is it's not loading up the characters. Um, it's really annoying. So you can see Fuzz, you can see Honcho McDuckett. Here comes C Dot over on the other side. Boom, he just gets Fuzz down. Honcho comes up, raids him. Here comes the muscle car. C Dot should be able to get this guy down doesn't gets taken out rabbits taking fire from no it's andy 
Andy ends up getting him down. Honcho McDuckett now runs from where he was at and starts to loot over here. Andy says, no, 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 I'm coming to loot myself. He's going to get that uh, Honcho McDuckett down. Do, 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 do. I don't know why these guys won't load up. And there he goes, and here comes Big Cooter Joe. So everything I said, it's all coming to fruition. Boom, boom, boom. And now Joe's got to run up, get to the side here, and he is going to get taken out right here. Okay, so this brings us to another of the little things. Okay, so now you can see where the circle is. Now, guys, if you are ever over in this side of the map and the circle is ending over here, it is a death sentence to be on this side of the mountain. This is why when I was down here in this building, I made a beeline to get over to here. And that's because the last place you want to be is over on this side of the mountain. It's too wide, uh, widely exposed. There's no cover. And just to kind of show you what happens, I couldn't even find a scope most of the game, and I finally found one, a three scope. So I line up Andy, I see him lay down, so now I take my time once I see this guy lay down. Boom, boom, boom. Get, get this guy down. Okay, so we are now down to nine people. So we went from 25 down to nine people pretty quick. So the next thing to kind of look at here as far as uh, sort of a mistake is we have a guy named Detenchi. Now Detenchi gets two really good shots on the guy down there at the bottom of the hill. A uh, guy named Mary, he ends up rushing over, sees him, takes shots, gets this guy down. The problem that Detenchi has is he then runs down and goes to loot him. When he goes down and goes to loot him, he ends up being out of the circle. He takes too long. There's a guy that's right down here, NY Co., and he is running in this direction. What he does is he puts himself in between Detenchi and the circle. Detenchi's now got a fight to get to the circle, and it's not going to be enough. There's a guy that I was kind of chasing, a guy named Jay Edwin, who was running down the hill at this point. NY Co. gets Detenchi down right here. That's the end of him. And I work my way over, taking a little bit of damage, but not much. So now Jay Edwin is down there at the bottom of the hill. NY Co. heals up. He sees Edwin, and then he gets up into a crouch position, and he starts to take shots. So when he does this, there's something key. So it's, one of again, one of the little things. When you have someone that is really close to you and they are, I mean, they are within your line of sight, take your time with your shot. There's no reason to rush your shot. So that shot right there tells me that there's somebody super, super close. So I move over, stand up, I see, or I don't stand up, take my time, line up the shot, get the head shot, and then follow that up with the body shot so I can get this guy down. Okay, so now I am firing at Edwin. We're down down to four people. Guys, it is a death trap to be over here. So Favorino is over here. And what this guy ends up doing is he actually sees Edwin all the way over there. And with the Mini-14, I might add, he gets some good shots. Um, he's able to get this guy down. Boom, boom, boom. Finally gets the guy down. Now what happens here is there's a guy down there at the bottom of the hill named Victor Victor, but I'm assuming he's German, so it's Victor Victor, but whatever. So Favorino sees me, and he actually hits me. I take damage right there. Now, here's sort of the result from that. Now Victor was actually looking in my direction because he knew those shots uh, were ringing out. So he thinks that I'm running over in this direction. But now Victor hears these shots from over here. Now. Here comes the circle, Favorino. Can't be here, man. I, you're going to take too much damage, and you're going to come straight down here, which means you're going to take fall damage, which means it's going to be the end of him. But to help him out, Victor actually sees him and goes ahead and just takes him out himself. One, two, and that is the end. So here's what Victor ends up doing. 
he thinks that I have worked my way over to this side because that's the last place that he saw me move. That is not where I am because now I've run back in the original direction that I was going to go. And so now I'm moving up this way. Now the result from this is Victor actually moves over to this side, gets into the open field, starts chucking grenades, and when he throws the grenades, um, that's what tells me that this guy is nowhere near me because none of these grenades are really near me. So I am able to kind of move up into the hill and I see this guy and I start taking shots. I actually hit him three times, but it's not enough to get him down. From there, Victor will actually move over, is able to get down, he heals up. Once he heals up, um, he actually moves over into my direction. Do, do, do. So I'm unloading on this guy. And I kind of make a mistake here. I chuck grenades, but I'm chucking grenades at where the guy is rather than where he's going to be. And that's a mistake on my part because the guy had enough time to heal up. And what I needed to do was throw grenades basically where I thought he might end up, not where he is. Um, sometimes that works, but not when the guy's had enough time to heal up. So the result from this is Victor moves over to me. I see him. I don't do any damage to him right there. Um, and so Victor is now moving his way around. So we're going to kind of, I'm going to slow it down a little bit so you can kind of see what happens. So I've taken a little bit of damage, but I've taken two painkillers at this point as well. Now I just did damage to Victor right there. So I knew I had done some damage and I knew that he wasn't fully healed up from when I had hit him earlier unless he used a med kit. So I'm going off the principle that, you know, maybe he just used the first aid. So I move back over, fire where I think he might be. Victor's already moved to the other side, pops out. I take more damage. I go ahead and move back over. I try to sight down. I don't get any damage. And I move back to here. Now here is where I make my final decision. Now, I've got the opportunity to heal up, but I don't want to heal up. And the reason is because I don't think this guy is going to heal up. I think if I try to heal up, he's going to go ahead and rush me, and I'm in a world of hurt. But here's what I realize. Like, okay, I'm hurt, and this guy's hurt. Whoever's going to get the next shot is going to be the one who wins the game. So what I want to do is do a hip fire. I don't want to just uh, shoot uh, or try to sight down the gun, what I want to do is just do a hip fire. Now, I don't recommend doing a hip fire unless you're in really close quarters combat, but where we are right now, that's exactly the situation that we're in. So I'm going to go ahead and slow it back down just a little bit more so you can kind of see. So I move back over to the right, and when I do, I hear this guy, shots start ringing out, then the shots stop. Once the shots stop, that's when I make my final push to get out into the open because I realize, like, okay, he's taking his finger off the trigger. Now's my opportunity to basically get right over and to get a shot. And I'm able to get him down. And I kind of recognize, like, you know, he's using a UMP. I'm using the M4. I'm going to do more damage than he is. So if the guy's as hurt as I think he is, I stand a really good chance of getting this guy down immediately from a hip fire shot. Now, again, I don't really recommend this. It's always better to sight down. But for this time, this situation, it just worked out. So, guys, that is this game. Let's jump straight into the next one. Alrighty guys, so we're jumping straight into this game and I'm going to kind of show you we are in North, we are in Torre Ahumada? I don't know. Okay, the last game it went a little bit longer than I wanted to, so I'm going to make this super, super short and sweet, um, but not much really to kind of point out uh, up to this point. Um, okay, the one thing I do want to show because I, I've got to give major props, what up yo, um, to... A guy that we're gonna look at now unfortunately uh, for these replays some of these guys are not loading up I don't know why it's really annoying but here's the situation there's a guy right here his name's I don't even know he is currently uh, sort of in a fight with Sam Ken knack whatever this guy's name however you say that so Sam um, had seen this guy earlier they end up getting into a, uh, a fight and we're gonna kind of show it do, 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 do. and we're almost there to where this fight is 
It's so annoying that this guy takes damage, comes back over. He's there, trust me. <laughs> and uh, he comes back over and sees this guy. Now, here's the key thing, guys. Um, look, there, there there have been a lot of really good shots in, in, in uh, PUBG. You know, th there's so many different people who play the game so well, and they get really, really good shots. So while this fight is going on, it is right through this window all the way over here. I'll bind. I'm trying to speed up to get there because it would take forever to make it. And here's the annoying thing. Um, his character hasn't loaded, and that kind of screws up the replay, so I can't show you from his actual angle looking down his scope. But this guy is sitting right here, and he gets this incredible, incredible shot on this guy. I mean, he... No, oh, I went too far. Boom, right there. Gets that guy down. I went in the wrong direction. It doesn't matter. Like, guys, like that, that is, I got to give a lot of credit to Albino the Dragoon because this guy, um, not only um, did he get Sam down immediately right after he ends up turning his attention to a guy who was right down here Brody man and he just got down Brody man now he's using the MK but at the end of the day there's still a lot of skill that goes into sort of what just happened with the shot he got uh, following that up with Brody man getting him down so I just wanted to give uh, credit where credit is due because it's it was such a good good spot and like I don't have time to go through this whole game especially because um, the characters aren't loading up and it's really annoying uh, so you can't kind of see down their scope um, but Albino the Dragoon played phenomenally well this guy was just getting down people left and right he just played fantastic uh, I just that shot by itself was so good but he just goes on a tear so okay let's focus okay so we're focusing on the little things so we're going to kind of look at one of the little things that swamp tuna ends up making a mistake on the circle is coming in tuna ends up running over to this side he starts moving down this little corridor all of a sudden he starts taking shots now here's the problem when you are taking shots, what you have to say to yourself is, these shots are coming from somewhere. And if you don't know where the shots are coming from, what you have to do is start to eliminate where the shots can't be from. So right there is when Tuna started to take some uh, damage from Albino. He's all the way over on the other side. And here's the thing, guys. Right in front of Tuna is a place that he could go and to heal up right right next to this container the reason I say that is because albino's using a silencer so when these shots are coming out what tuna isn't aware of and he's taking the shots while he's next to this building so here's what he knows the guy that's shooting him is not on his left he also knows that the guy is not in this building and he also knows that this guy is not directly right over here because even with the silencer it would have been a lot louder so the problem that uh, he's got is he sort of keeps moving rather than getting to cover. And he ends up putting himself right in front of Albino, lays down, and boom, boom, boom. That is the end of that. So you've got to be aware of where shots are not coming from because that's going to help you to get into a position to heal up and then figure out where are the shots coming from. If you don't know right away, what you need to do is just start ticking away where stuff is. Okay, so we are getting to the end of this game. I am currently over on the other side. There's about 30 seconds to go. Now, where I am at is right here, and what I wanted to do was to get up into um, uh, this, next, uh, this next circle, obviously. But what I'm trying to do is to get to this side of the this side of the building now I don't want to get into the building because I don't like getting into buildings and we've got a guy right here C4 and something happens and this is key and this is the kind of stuff that you've got to pick up on 
So, okay, right here's where I'm gonna slow it back down. Now, what I was positive of was that there was someone who was over in the area where Albino had been. Um, he's not where he, he is, he had moved his way back. But what I thought was that someone was right over in this area. So what I wanted to do was to swing over to here. Now, the, I do a bad job and kind of putting myself in a position where I'm really easily seen by C4R. So I'm going to actually slow it down. And we're going to look at it from my perspective. Do, do, do. All of a sudden, C4 pops up I see this guy he's shooting at me but guess what guys I don't get the kill you know it doesn't pop up on my screen now I see this guy and all of a sudden I see that he's taking damage so immediately here's what I know uh, I'm not the one that got him down it's the other guy and what I mean by that is this means the other guy knows where I'm at because we can actually go back and look at Albino's point of view. We don't need to, so I'm not going to. But when he's looking through his scope and his shot, what he sees is that C4 is looking in my direction. C4 is firing his weapon. So Albino knows this guy's not shooting at him. He's shooting at me. So now I know that Albino knows where I'm at. And I don't know 100% where Albino is, but now I know he's obviously not near me. He's on the other side of the circle. So that's key and that's important. And there's a reason for that. And we're going to get to it right here. And this is what I decided to do. So I work my way into this building. I'm kind of looking, waiting for the, the circle to hit just to see exactly where it lands. Uh, for the next one so you can kind of see where it is now I'm technically in that circle but this is no place that I can be because I know the other guy has got more room than I do and there's no way I can stay here so I know that this guy knows that I had been over in this direction so what I say in my head is okay what I need to do is distract this guy what I need to do is to deceive him and make him think that I think that he is somewhere over on this side. I know that sounds stupid and complicated, but trust me, it makes perfect sense. So what I do is I run back over right to here. When I get to here, I chuck a grenade and I throw it basically through these windows. Now, it doesn't matter where the grenade goes because I have no intention of you know, trying to hang out over into this area. The moment I throw the grenade and I don't prime it, I throw the grenade, I start running, and I get to over here, hop out the window, and I move up, and I try to, uh, you know, I'm looking over in this direction, and then I move over onto this side. So I want to show you what sort of happens from Albino's point of view uh, when this grenade goes off, which direction he's looking. So I chuck the grenade when I get back into sort of the center there. Yep, there I go. So you'll kind of be able to see it. Chuck the grenade. Grenade goes off. Now look what this guy does. He is now looking over in that direction because he thinks that I think he's somewhere over there and that I'm focusing my attention over there. Uh, you know I'm not because I'm telling you. So this guy is unaware that I am kind of working my way up over to the side over here. So kind of look at it from my perspective because you can see where this guy is. So I start working my way around. I'm being really slow and cautious. Just trying to make sure all of a sudden I see the guy right there. And now that they put in the vector and they've upped the SMGs, man, I'm loving using it. So I see the guy. I kind of take my time. I zoom in. And I just, you know, saw how much damage I did. I knew that I hit this guy multiple times. So we're going to get to the final thing for this fight. So I'm going to slow it back down a little bit. So I can see where this guy goes. And now this guy is shooting at me. But here's what I recognized immediately. I can see where this guy is. And I realize that I've got the concrete wall. I've got the posts. And I've got the fence in between the two of us. This doesn't mean that he can't get me down, but what this does mean is that there's a good chance that a lot of his bullets are basically not going to find their mark. 
And so you can see it from my perspective. Let's go over and kind of look at it from his perspective and how he's seeing me. So sure enough, he's this guy is missing me, but he gets a couple hits. He runs out of ammo. Now he's got to reload. So now no more uh, fire is coming my way, and here's what I do. Now I have no intention of trying to heal up, but what I want to do is make this guy think that I'm going to heal up. So when I get up here, I immediately hit the ground. The moment I hit the ground, I pop straight back up because I can see this open area right in front of me. And what I know is where this guy is and where he, he, he's currently standing, he's not going to stay there. So this guy's going to start moving and he's not going to be able to get to cover, um, you know, basically backing up away from me. If he goes this way, I'll see him. If he comes this way, I'll see him. So I have no intention of trying to heal up at this point. Every intention I have is to basically get this guy down. So I hop down, hop back up immediately, stand up. I see the guy and I'm able to get the guy down immediately. So guys, it's the little things in the game that will cost you and that will help you. And that's just what you have to do. You've got to be able to kind of recognize some of the things that you're doing well, some of the things that you're not doing well, and trying to be able to be really, really critical and analytical and really strategic in the moment. And that's really only going to happen the more and more you play. And, you know, if if everything went perfect for me every time, I'd get a chicken dinner every single time. That doesn't happen. You know, I'm not on the level of Shroud and Lumi. And uh, Lumi killed me the other day down to three of us. I was so, <laughs> dang it. Uh, someday, Lumi, I'll get my revenge. But anyway, it's what you have to do. You have to recognize all these different situations and scenarios and figure out how, uh, what is your best play, what's your best move, because it's the little things that will get you chicken dinner. So, alrighty, guys, thanks so much for watching, and we will catch you next time. See ya.